Welcome. Welcome to our iPod, iPod service that is being recorded at St. Paul's Lutheran Church for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Will you pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless our worship this day. Bless all who are part of the response to the COVID-19 virus, be with doctors, nurses, and medical teams. But be with us also who have been displaced from our worship services in our churches. And grant that in this service, you would work powerfully through your word, through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you also may be. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip. However, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in the words of Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in the Son of Man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heavens and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. He who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down and the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Join me in confessing our common Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
text for today, for Mother's Day, is recorded in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, <clears throat> I remind you to fan into flame the faith of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Thus far, the text. Dear mothers and dear friends in Christ, Mother's Day is not just for mothers. It really is for all of us. For all of us have had or have a mother. Some of you can send a card to your mother, or give a phone call, or perhaps go for a visit, albeit with some social distancing. But for other of us, others of us, myself included, our mothers have passed from this life to the next. We cannot go, we cannot reach out, we cannot go. But we certainly can remember in our thoughts what our mothers have meant to us what they have taught us, and we can be grateful for the example that they have provided for us. Today I'm directing my thoughts to the valuable contribution of our mothers to our lives. We're going to use the words of 1 Timothy chapter 1. Our mothers taught us the meaning of love, not in words, but in example. Emotional connection is so important. Paul is the preacher of Christian doctrine. He catalogs so well the doctrines that have been passed down to us. But he's not known for being overly emotional. Powerful, yes. Emotional, no. But here in our text we have Paul as emotional as he gets. Paul must have been very close to Timothy a young pastor that he was mentoring at the time. And so our text opens, I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience. As night and day I remember you with my prayers, recalling your tears. I hope to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. Paul was recalling a time of his departure, his saying farewell, to Timothy, who he left to plant a church, and Paul went on in his missionary journey. While Paul needed to go, he deeply regretted leaving Timothy, and he would miss the emotional connection that developed with his beloved student. It might have been like the time my wife tells me about her grandmother's departure from Finland and moving to Iron County, Wisconsin in the early 1900s. Can you imagine this teenage girl leaving the only home she knew in Western Finland, leaving her parents behind, her brothers and her sisters, and she would never see her dear mother again. She would never go back to her native Western Finland home. What a, an emotional departure it must have been, and how often did she long to go back to that hole. What an emotional departure it must have been for St. Paul leaving Timothy, and it left an indelible mark on him. The mark was love, a deep connection for a young pastor. Mothers have a deep emotional connection with their children. A newly minted pastor, fresh out of the seminary, went to hear a well-known authority of his church body on family. And this elderly minister began his message this way. 
He said, I learned love in the arms of another man's wife. My father's wife, in other words, his mother. So impressed was the young minister that he went home and he said, I'm going to start my sermon on Sunday, on Mother's Day Sunday, the same way. And so he began. I learned to love in the arms of another man's wife. And then he said, to the best of me, I don't know who that was. You see, it was his mother. That's where most of us have learned what love is. When a child is hurt, who's the one they want to hold them and comfort them? Most often, it's the mother. It's a mother who's rightfully gained her position by going through great pains in childhood. Isaiah picks up this emotional connection and uses it an illustration in Isaiah 49 where he says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast or have no compassion for the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Mothers, you teach your children to love and they don't forget it. You deserve it. You made great sacrifices for them at all hours of the day and the night. Of all of us, including children, we know love because mothers provided it for their children. But Mother's Day gives us a chance also to talk about the emotional connection God wants to have with each of us. Isaiah continues that illustration of a mother's love, and he tells us about the love of God. Isaiah says, See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. God is God, and he wants to be close to those who he has redeemed. Can a God be so concerned like a speck like me? And I'm told there are six billion other specks like me walking on the face of the earth. Can God want to know and love each one of us? God can, and God does every day. The promise of God comes to us. Back in Isaiah's day, the writing instruments were rare. Notice in the text that God doesn't suggest he has written our names in washable ink or in a permanent marker, but with a hammer and a, in one hand and a chisel in the other. He has engraved our names into his hand, into the hand of the eternal God so he can never forget them. And they're always so close to them, he always can read them. It was also hands, the hands of Jesus, who were nailed to the cross so their sins would be paid. Those hands bore the scars of the nails, and those scars were also in the risen Christ, who bore the sins of the world. And he rose again, and he lives forevermore. Don't treat God as if he can be contained on the pages of a book or fashioned in the way you would want to create him. God loves you. He loves you in Jesus Christ, and he wants to be close to you. Next, our text tells us about our first spiritual teacher. Mothers are often our first spiritual teacher and mentors. Paul knew Timothy well. He knew Timothy's family well. Two women greatly contributed to Timothy's life, his mother and his grandmother. They didn't have it easy because Timothy's father was a Greek and a non-Christian. But listen to what Paul says about the influence of these two women. I have remembered your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Your life has been greatly enriched by your mother, 
who taught you to pray. It was not a minister who taught you. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. No minister taught you that prayer. It was probably your mother. Who repeating it night after night, you said it right along with her. And while the Holy Spirit alone works faith in our hearts, our mothers are one of the key instruments that God uses to teach us the faith. While we in the church can instruct children and teach them, the most profound spiritual influence on, on children are their parents. Where you go and what you do has a powerful influence on children. Your being in church with your child or your attitude toward church and spiritual things will have a profound impact on kids for generations. Karl Barth, who was one of the most scholarly theologians of his time, at a dinner party, Dr. Barth was asked, what is the most profound thought that you have ever had? And Dr. Barth replied, Jesus loves me, this I know, or the Bible tells me so. Friend, where have you learned that Jesus loves you? Was it your mother? Chances are it was. To know in your heart what God has done for you in Christ is reason to give thanks, thanks to God, and also thanks to our mothers. So, mothers provide a deep emotional connection, and we thank God that they were our first spiritual teachers. And now, we can honor God and our mothers by our third point, fanning into white-hot flame the faith your mother has planted in you. Every parent's goal in life should be this simple one, getting to heaven and bringing their children with them. <clears throat> I remember the Bible passage well. What does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Paul addressed spiritual growth to the young pastor this way. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Parents spend time and effort raising their children. Parents provide so many extra things for their children. Music lessons, dance lessons, sports that have uh, the that they have, that have they have an elementary and middle school and some parents drive hundreds of miles for their games and related activities a few years ago i was at the minneapolis airport in the summer and there were young high school kids a hockey team getting ready to fly out from minneapolis i asked them where they were from and what they were doing in minneapolis and they said they were from Canada, I think it was Edmonton, and that they were in cities for a hockey tournament in the dead uh, middle of summer. You don't tell me those parents weren't investing thousands of dollars so their boy could play hockey. But I want to remind every parent that every activity that you bring your kids to and they participate in, is, has a very limited lifespan. These hockey players in all sports, you can only do for so long. But eternity is for eternity. Paul is telling the people of his day and us, fan the flame of your faith. Most of what we spend time on and effort on will come to an abrupt end at death as the psalmist said for today, and if not before. But teaching the faith in Jesus Christ will go beyond the grave for your children and for all of us. Now, today, if your mother is living, honor her with a visit or a call or a car. 
For many of us, we can no longer do that, for they have been called to heaven. But we can honor them in keeping the instructions of Timothy. Keep your faith alive and well, growing and rooted in Christ. Honor your mother also by remaining faithful to Christ, drawing spiritual strength from God's holy and sacred word. Would everyone say a prayer with me? Dear Lord, you gave me a precious gift in my mother. Keep me in the faith which she planted in me. I give thanks that my mother had me baptized into the Christian faith. And may, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may God keep my faith alive and well until you call me from this world to the next to experience eternity with the God who saved me. And may I be my by my precious mother, a great treasure. Amen. In the prayers of the church today, we're going to remember the family of John Moss, who passed away about a week ago. We'll remember Kate and Kate and John's children, who grieved the loss of a very dear man, who had also so many friends in the community and in the congregation. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the family of John Moss. We're grateful that in John's life you have given him so many blessings, especially for calling him to faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that you put your seal and your mark on him in holy baptism. He was your child, redeemed and made holy. Keep him in his baptismal faith. Now that he is in heaven, he can rejoice in its fullness and its completion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes. O gracious Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, grant peace and safety to the homes of your people. Make the heads of every household be diligent in their tasks to teach their family and enable them for this duty. Hear our prayers for those who call you in every need. Let love and patience rule between husbands and wives, parents and children. And as we have received forgiveness, may we be forgiving to others. Lord, in your mercy. On this Mother's Day, O oh Lord, we rejoice in the mothers that you have given us. From our mothers, we've gained a great heritage, a great legacy. Most importantly, from our mothers, most of us have learned to love, to love one another, to have a deep emotional connection with another human being. For this great blessing, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. And we pray the collect of the day. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you have promised, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the Word. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join me in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. 
Amen. Taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen.